Good afternoon, my brothers and only friends, and previously I made a, a video discussing about the the crimes committed by one Daniel Larson from the state of Colorado, and as something of a little bit of a follow-up to it, I kind of wanted to go over something that came up a couple of days ago on the Daniel Larson subreddit, and something that unfortunately meets a uh, very grim reading. So... I'll do my best to try and make this the, the size of this thing as big as I can because, well, as as bad as it all sounds, I want people to understand something very, very important. And it's that, well, as grim as this situation is, it couldn't get any worse than this. So allow me to read for you in full exactly what the order of detention is for Daniel Larson, which is something that gets... Uh, appointed whenever you get arrested for and especially under the uh, the crimes that Daniel Larson has specifically committed that the federal the FBI had to get involved with so in the United States District Court for the District of Colorado criminal case number 24-CR-00130-RMR-1 United States of America plaintiff v vacant 1 Daniel Larson defendant order of detention this matter came before the court for a detention hearing on the 10th of May 2024. The government is requesting detention in this case. The defendant contested detention. Both sides offered argument beyond the contents of the bail report. In making my findings of fact, I have taken judicial notice of the information set forth in the court docket of proceedings and the pretrial services report. In order to sustain a motion for detention, the government must establish that there is no condition or combination of conditions which could be imposed in connection with pre-trial release that would reasonably assure a. the appearance of the defendant is required or b. the safety of any other person or the community. 18U.S.C.3142B The former element must be established by a pre-deponderance of the evidence and the latter requires proof by clear and convincing evidence. The Bail Reform Act establishes the following factors to be considered in determining whether there are conditions of release that will reasonably assure the appearance of the defendant and the safety of the community. 1. The nature and circumstances of the offence charged, including whether the offence is a crime or violation, a violation of section 1591, a federal crime of terrorism, or involves a minor victim or a controlled substance, firearm, explosive, or destructive device. 2. The weight of the evidence against the person. 3. The history and characteristics of the person including a. The person's character, physical and mental condition, family ties, employment, financial resources, length of his residence in the community, community ties, past conduct, history relating to drug and alcohol abuse, criminal history, and record concerning appearance at court proceedings and b. whether at the time of the current offence or arrest the person was on probation, on parole, or on a other release pending trial, sentencing appeal, or completion of sentence for an offence under federal, state, or local law, and for the nature and seriousness of the danger to any person of the community that would be posed by the person's release. Weighing the factors set out in the Bail Reform Act, I find the following. The defendant is charged with multiple counts resulting from threats to bomb public places, including a Colorado courthouse, the University of Colorado campus, a non-profit center in Lakewood, Colorado, and the White House. He also threatened an FBI agent and threatened to bomb the FBI headquarters. These threats were widely transmitted publicly via the internet, usually on videos via apps such as TikTok or YouTube. Mr. Larson appears to have mental health issues. He has been homeless for years, and it was represented by Consul that he makes some money from his internet posting and may receive social security benefits. He is unemployed and has no stable place to live. Although it is not clear whether Mr. Larson intended to actually act on his threats, or whether he had either the means or ability to act on those threats, a threat to bomb a public building or courthouse or university campus causes significant public harm. People are terrorised by such threats, and it usually prompts a significant law enforcement response, as certain of the threats in this case did. 
at least with respect to the non-profit centre, it had to be evacuated and its operations were advisedly affected for hours. It was represented by the United States that Mr. Larson has been contacted repeatedly by the FBI and that he has admitted to making these threats. He was admonished by the FBI to not make additional threats. And yet he ignored this consul and the conduct recurred. In addition... It was represented by the United States that Mr. Larson's conduct appears to be escalating, including recent statements to the effect that he has been to jail and learned how to make a bomb. Mr. Larson has four prior warrants for failure to appear, and he has also had his probation revoked in a number of state court matters. He was on state court probation in two separate cases during the commission of the alleged incent offence. The state court has ordered him to complete a mental health evaluation, which he has failed to do. Based on these facts, I conclude by clear and convincing evidence that no condition or combination of conditions of release will reasonably assure the safety of the community of that the defendant will appear at trial as required. Accordingly, it is hereby ordered that the defendant is committed to the custody of the Attorney General or his designated representative for confinement in a corrections facility separate, to the extent predictable, from persons awaiting or serving sentences or being held in custody pending appeal, and it is further ordered that the defendant is to be afforded a reasonable opportunity to consult confidentiality with defence counsel, and it is further ordered that upon of his court or on many on the request of an attorney for the United States of America, the person in charge of the corrections facility shall deliver defendant to the United States Marshal for the purpose of an appearance in connection with this proceeding. Dated May 10th, 2024, by the court Reed Nave, United States Magistrate Judge N. Reed Nuita. So... What could be deterred from uh, all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is one of two things. The first, and probably the most uh, occurring, is the fact that not only has it absolutely reached the interests and the notions of the courts, which, in the case of uh, Daniel Larson's preceding cases, there was no doubt in anybody's mind that this sort of thing was going to happen, There couldn't be any other doubt in anybody's mind owing to the incredible seriousness of Daniel Larson's threats, which there may be an argument to suggest that threats are going to be taken incredibly seriously owing to what we know of Daniel Larson's characteristics, his threats, and his other incredibly dubious and degenerative behaviours. But we've also got to concern ourselves with the fact that Well, how exactly is Daniel Larson even going to be able to stand trial if he has, according to the report, mental health issues that appear to have been escalating? How exactly is the court going to be satisfied that Daniel Larson is going to be fit to stand trial? What technically will happen once if Daniel Larson is proven not to be seen as fit to stand trial? Well, Daniel Larson will simply be ordered to write out a statement in his defence and somebody has to transcribe it to the court. How exactly any of this will go about uh, will be a particularly good question, and it's something that's going to be uh, perhaps better handled by someone who understands more about uh, United States uh, jurisdiction and uh, proceedings that happen in court better than I do. Certainly, if this sort of thing happened in the UK, Daniel Larson's best bet is that if he doesn't end up standing trial as the defendant in the old Bailey, we could consider Daniel Larson has probably escaped uh, quite uh, convincingly, even if he was to serve time in, let's say, the Monster Mansion in Brixton. However, I think it's fair to say at this point, Daniel Larson, owing to the mounting evidence, the fact that Daniel Larson has not done mental health evaluations, things that absolutely he probably should have done during the previous times he was incarcerated, and for the fact that... In just a very short space of time, Chris has, or Daniel, I should say, has continued to get worse and worse and worse with his behavior. But the fact that his threats as a result of him had to result into an entire building having to be evacuated, I think it can be safe to assume that at least from this point onwards, that there's not really much hope for Daniel. And because of this, 
we simply have to accept the fact that, well, Daniel Larson, whatever his sentencing may be, it's probably likely that we won't be seeing him for a very, very long time. So I certainly hope that this video will, you found informative and I will look forward to seeing all of, all of you guys again in the next video. Take care and bye-bye for now, my friends.